you said you were just looking for one one particular uh, artist, rapper, um, but then you end up getting a duo. The only one out of that whole little section of people that I didn't hear rap at that point mm -hmm. was Gabe. So I wanted Soli, I wanted Gus, but I haven't heard, I had, at that time I had never heard uh, Gabe rap, so I was yeah, like, um, it was really my birthday party, uh, my 21st birthday party that kind of introduced us. We were living together in, the, in our fucking garage. All I wanted for my 21st was a big fucking open mic show, whatever. Yeah, it was Willie who uh, who really sealed the deal because um, we knew Jorian. Yeah, yeah, he Jorian was brought Willie. Yes, Jorian um, was friends with. Somebody else who was staying in that house. Shouts out to Alize. Shouts out to Zay, man. For Zay, real. Zay is a big part of this, uh, this story. Uh, we met in high school at the Met Sacramento. We were just skate buddies, bonding on hella music. We had a favorite skate spot that we dubbed Sweet A, because there was a door that said Sweet A. Uh, in that. You know, I thought that was so like magical at the time, and I've since like realized <laughs> like how many doors they should be. Yeah, it's <laughs> so whatever, but yeah, I mean, gave us something to run with, and it stuck. I guess we liked the ring. At the time, Gus was trying to do uh, more diverse music than rap. Um, he was still trying to play guitar and sing and, and shit, too. It was me, it was the one trick pony, who was just rapping. Kind of a mishmash, one rapper and one real musician. And it became a, a good old-fashioned rap duo. So, yeah, also like you said, place. magical moment. It's a magical place. Not actually place. that good of a title, but yeah. Lots that, of, uh, that place is both cursed and blessed. It's, yeah. uh, it's a lot of energy there, it's a lot a, of history. It's a divide between, you know, the normal and the paranormal. It's the Twilight Zone. It's fucking dope. <laughs> <laughs> the illest. It's definitely like, like bar heavy. And uh, I mean, it ranges from energetic to like, more mopey, <laughs> but like it can be very mopey, but it's always a uh, frantic enough that it's not a uh, slow pace at the very least, or uh, lacking in just material. Yeah, like I think if anything, it's overwhelming usually. I think we just try to like you know like make shit <laughs> that like sounds good. First of all, we're both just uh, we're fans. Uh, we're we're geeks about the shit. Uh, that's how it started. Our styles very much developed, like, in this group, so I would say the most common theme to our lyrics is just, um, us, us lost boys finding ourselves and y'all being along for the ride, I guess. Um, it's always very confessional, very personal. I like to think it's relatable, too. You know, taking these, uh, these personal experiences that are important for me to get out and making them relatable, and, you know, making them a song. Yeah, I think, I think that that's, like, an important theme. You know, and I think all artists and, and musicians try to do this, like, to a certain extent. But And it's, like, super cool to, like, do this in a duo, but, like, like try to find these, like, common threads, you know, ex experience or whatever. What I'm trying to say it's is, true, like, like create, is. create, like, relatable... Like, are the way that, like, like I felt, or, like, you felt, or, like, conversations that we've had. Because, like, when I listen to music, when I really like an artist, it's because they're able to, like, say things that I feel that I can't put into yeah, words. Yeah, they put something into words that I was feeling, and I understand yeah. it better now that I've heard it. Exactly. And, yeah, at least now, that's that's definitely what our our projects are about. Don Dada is basically basically a nine five Young Gun Love affiliate. That's my cousin. He just been rocking with us and just making hella music when we're nine five. They call me Don Dada. I'm, I hail from Oakland, California. You feel me? That's where I was born. But I grew up in Sac. I'm a Sac baby. By my name, my cousin came up with my name. I just made an Instagram. My cousin came up with my name. She was like, "Yo, it'll be cool. Name yourself Don Dada." I was like, "All right, I'm gonna run with it." I went to school. And then my homie started calling me daughter. I was like, oh shit, that really just stuck. And ever since, I was like, yeah, I'm just, I'm daughter, daughter. I've been doing music for, I want to say, it was since 2020, about four years now. I started when I was 18. I was in a, a, a group, a little duo called First Take, you know what I'm saying? We called ourselves First Take because that's what we did, finish it, First Take. But uh, was doing a little music, you know what I'm saying? A lot of my inspiration comes from uh, like tracks by Lil Wayne. Or, Lil Wayne's No Ceilings, that's, that's what got me to start actually writing music. I didn't have, I didn't look up YouTube beats or anything. I would play a CD and 
keep playing it on repeat, on repeat, writing words, trying to rap over Lil Wayne rapping. And because I had a daughter, that made me sit back and really start looking at the music that I make. Having a baby, that made me uh, really change how I made music. Everything, I'm, I'm a perfectionist even from the jump, so I'm sitting there reciting my lyrics, going over it over and over and over until I'm like, yeah, all right, this is it, this is the one. Especially when I'm when I'm by myself too, yeah, I'll work on a song for like, oh, oh, I don't even, I can't even really give it a timeline. It's a feel. I do everything. I do a lot of things off of how I feel. Young God Mob is going to the top. Mark my words. That's why, and I say this because we growing up, we, we coming up in SAC, making our name in SAC, where you hear a certain type of music and we doing something completely different. We trying to change the whole scheme and that's what I like. You know what I mean? We all got our own backgrounds and our own, own upbringings and whatnot, but we all can come together and be a team. You know what I mean? We know how we can build off of each other instead of putting each other down or trying to be better than the other person. We trying to make sure you be better than yourself at the end of the day. But yeah, man, I'm Don Dada with the Young God Mob. Shouts out to 9-5 for even starting that shit because if, if 9-5 didn't start Young God Mob, I don't even know if I'd be still making music. I'd probably just be working and playing football, and that'd be it. You met Sully, right? You're the one that brought in Sully, too, huh? Sully was there. Like, I'm, they were all, you were there, too. No, yeah, uh, we, met him. we met him at like, like yeah, at a house party and shit, talking about uh, having Gus in. Yeah. And then Soli, yeah, because uh, Soli Bowl um, also rocked with Sweet. But I didn't, I didn't meet them. I'm not the one that necessarily met them. It was Jorian. Yeah, Jorian. At CBI. Ever since I met them, bro, they Like, I've learned so fucking much, bro. Like, honestly, dude, I kind of think of it as like one of those things is like, it was like meant to be. If I never met Gabe and Gus, and, and, and how I met those fools too was just like weird. Like I met um, I met Gus over at Seats of the Tours 18th birthday party. They had a party and hell of people came through. Uh, Poor Majesty was there. And um, we had like a little uh, a show, like, like they had an open mic in there. So years later, and I met Gus over there, and years later he hits me up and then me and Gabe, and then I meet Gabe and shit over at my house. Then they had this idea of doing backyard shows and shit. So then the first show I went to, I met Young God Mob. And it wasn't really like shit was set in stone, but we ended up having like a cypher. Like all, like all the artists and shit got together and were just rapping for hours. My name's Sully Ball. I'm from Sacramento, California. I'm born and raised. I'm 22. Rapper, producer, so alright, so how I got my name was basically, my homies gave me my name because I used to fucking walk around the house with a bowl of cereal and smoking a pipe, you know what I mean, so, and I still smoke pipes and I, ca I carry my pipe around, like fucking everywhere I go and shit, so it's Soli Bowl, and my name's Sol, S-O-L. Soli has like a weird... Flow. Like it's a very interesting flow. It is. It's like, damn, this nigga sound like a surfer. Like, <laughs> I'm also like the coolest nigga of all time. Yeah. Nigga, niggas rap is phenomenal. He just slides on any beat he gets on. I don't know. I try to keep shit like positive. You know what I mean? Like, I want, I want it to be like a, like a source for people, for for anyone. You know what I mean? Like anyone to listen to if they're like feeling bad or anything, you know what I mean? Even if you want to feel good or just want to hear some like real human shit. I try to keep shit relevant. I try to inform people and shit, you know what I mean? I try to keep it real. I try to keep it authentic because, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my pops. I grew up in the, um, because of him and shit. I'm uh, the son of Pete B from the Cuff, so I've had a lot of experience just like with a lot of older folks who are like, Born in, well, I don't want to say born, but fucking really do this shit. I don't really have like a, a category. Like I don't, I don't, I don't have like a certain like subject for my music and shit. It's just I try to call it like just good fucking music. It's you know what I'm saying. I try to keep it real, authentic. John Morland Productions. I've always known him. He came around a little bit later. That nigga is dope. Yeah. He's also 
very fucking knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. To be honest, like, he does like he, photography, ooh. cinematography, cinematography, and, yeah. like, and, music and, shit, and beats. Beats. At first, what a lot of people don't know is he was actually going to be our manager at one point. Um, he definitely has a lot of faith in us, and he's always been producing. He actually kind of introduced me to producing on FL Studios. He's one of the person, uh, one of the people actually that uh, introduced me to FL uh, production wise. Also, Cam um, SS beat him. Uh, but yeah, you know, and then me and Rob, we, uh, well, John, we made, uh, we made a few tracks and then it got to the points where he was like, yo, let me make beats for y'all because y'all got the lyrics y'all got, you know, y'all got it in you. You just don't got the production behind you. And this was like, this was before Glare was really producing a lot of our stuff. This is when we were still kind of like sourcing out to YouTube for group stuff and, a uh, good majority of us already had producers we kind of liked that we were going with. Beat him. Beat him. Beat him. Beat him. Beat him. Beat him. SS beat him. The nigga been around forever. Yeah, he's been around 9 5. Um, That's beat him. Okay. Beat him. Oh, yeah, it's beat him. He's, in, he's right beside me. I'm from South Sacramento, California. 95828, you know, Taliban. My name is BDM. Like, beat him. Like, that's my name. It's beat him. BDM. However, you want to go by it. You know, it's about that money about the music, bitch don't move, like, you know what I mean? Like, no, really though, don't fuck, don't. Okay, so my music career started off when I was a goddamn baby. Kindergarten, like I was writing raps. I wanted to be 50 Cent so fucking bad. Like I had everything 50 Cent and Shaq, like them was my two niggas growing up. But I started off wanting to be 50 Cent and shit. And then, I don't know, I started liking B.O.B. probably like middle school. I was like, yeah, I like that weird shit. And it was like B.O.B. was doing it for me, you feel me, borderline white, but it's still all right. So it, it was like that. But then after that, you feel me, I think I started liking Kanye, and Kanye was my favorite rapper. And after Kanye, it was Ferg. And like, that's when shit started going sideways and dark. Cause like, ASAP Ferg, like that old shit, he just rap about dark shit. He be doing shit to females, just disrespect. He's a real disrespectful motherfucker. And he was like my last favorite rapper. And then it just became me because now I be saying like all types of crazy shit in the middle of the song. First I wanted to be a rapper, then I started making beats, and I kept on making beats. I still be rapping, but I be making a lot of beats. Go get them beats. I just be rapping. A lot of the stuff be true. Sometimes I be lying. Nah, I don't be capping. That's the only cap I'm ever gonna cap. But uh, nah, it just it, it's mainly about just regular ass shit, you know. Shooting motherfuckers, beating niggas ass type shit. And that's cool. That nigga's insane. Literally. That nigga, that nigga got a problem. Yeah. He need to be abusing beats. Why do you do that and why does it work? That nigga's a terrorist when it comes to beats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna demolish it. It's gonna be and kind of bad. It'll be, it'll be mixed. Perfect. I be singing. I be singing. I like the romantic shit. So I be singing on the track. I do this little high pitch thing. I be thinking I'm Teddy Pendergrass. I'm not. But you feel me? I, I can dream. See you tomorrow. One of the best singers in the goddamn world. Yeah, really, really talented ass yeah. person. Nigo crazy. Nigo crazy. Nigo niggas wild. Nigo crazy. Got big ass. And that nigga can rap. Yeah. Indigo. Indigo. That's the homie. That nigga go crazy. That nigga's a poet. Yeah. 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 Basically fucking poet. And, and it got damn artists. Yeah. Painting and shit. Born in Reno, Nevada. And then moved out here when I was really young. East side, north side, south side. Um, I started making music when I was really young, like I started making like little songs when I was like a kid, like when I was like young, young. Just writing little things when I was like 10. Started writing like verses and shit. Really introduced myself when I was 14. Started really getting into it when I was like 16 and older. Took a break for a little while and just for a little while, just when I had my kid. And I was like, you know what? There's no point in that. <laughs> I was like, uh. She's gonna see me do this. Do y'all even do shows? Do y'all just go up shows to pick up members, or y'all doing shows or something? <laughs> That's what it feels like. That's what does what it feels like. <laughs> we don't really go to perform no more. We just look for niggas. Like, like, I, I had to be like, yeah. We'll think about it. <laughs> One of you niggas gonna make it. We just keep cherry picking. We do got a roster of people wanting to join. So. Ladies, when I drive right by in the whip, and when they look at me, they know that I'm F L Y. If you're acting like a blade, hit the door, bitch. Bye, Lord, give me a sign. I'm going out of my mind. I don't know what to do. I'm turning life to crime. Just to see that dime, gotta take with mine. Do what I gotta do to shine. Stab a nigga in the ear with a chopstick. I'm not even in LA, and I'm not a cop. Faded at my spot. So
swig in the bottle constantly cause I'm not able to take no shots Activator gag reflex, dodge with the reflex You dogs know I'm cat like, I build up mad hype Pause for a minute to build up the comprehension You niggas ain't in detention, I lock you behind my bars This is prison, and I know you ain't escaping Let me end it here before I lose my concentration Cause when people get me worked up I just be talking shit too much I'm angry and don't give two fucks below me you